our Legend series. We've been in this for eight weeks now. Uh, four women, four men studying some different legends and characters of the Bible. Today, we are going to conclude this series um, with another prophet. Uh, the, he has the largest prophetic book uh, in the Bible. It's 66 chapters. It's the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah. The, another term for prophet in the Old Testament was the, the term seer. They were, they were a seer, and the reason why they would call them that is because prophets could see things, right, that we, that normal people just can't see, so God would show them things, and, he, and God would say, okay, now see this, and then go say that. Now see this, go say that, and so God would show them things, they'd see it, and God would say, okay, now go, go, go say what you saw, and he, they would go declare or go say it, and they would go prophesy, and what's really cool I think about today is you, I think we have with, with Isaiah and pulling him down from the great grandstands again as we're doing this series and letting this legend of faith kind of walk with us, run with us, learn from his life. We have the opportunity, I believe, today to see our spiritual journey differently. We, we have the opportunity, based on what, what Isaiah, this prophet, saw and what he experienced himself, that, that, that Man, it can, it can change something, like in the name of Jesus, it can change something in us today that we can see this journey we're on, we can see faith differently based on the way that Isaiah ran his race, man. So let me give you the feeling early. Usually I give you the Hebrews first in this series and the feeling. Let me give it to you early. So if Isaiah was here and he was able to actually talk with us, run with us, and speak from his life, I think the big idea that he would share with us is this in your notes, for when you're trying to make sense of it all, like when you're trying to make sense of the pain you're going through, the trial you're going through, the difficulty, or maybe you're trying to make sense of this whole faith thing, church thing, religion thing, relationship with God thing, you see other people got it, and they got, they're raising their hands, they're doing stuff, they're growing, and you're still trying to make sense of it. I believe Isaiah would say, man, when you're trying to make sense of it all, what you really need is to meet God. What you really need, write it down this way, is an encounter with God that changes everything. How I many of you know that one encounter with God can change everything? Amen, church? So some of you have met a church. You've encountered a message, per se. You've encountered uh, a pastor, you, 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 that, which is, that's, those are good things that you met a church and stuff, but that's not all. That's not all you're meant to do. I never even really wanted to build a church for church people to go to church. That was never the intention of Discovery Church, to start a church for church people to go to church. My job, my job, my role, my goal is not to get you to join here. That's not my goal. My goal is to get you closer to God. It's to get you to have this encounter and experience with God, you guys. Our, our theme verse makes a lot more sense with the backdrop of the big idea of Isaiah Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Let's read it for the final time together. It says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and we're told, if you're new, the, the witnesses is, is the previous chapter, Hebrews 11, these legends of faith. The Bible says, since kind of we're, we're surrounded by these legends of faith, man, they're inspiring us. And I hope this, in, this message series has been inspiring and encouraging to you. Because of that, he says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And see, that's really difficult for us to do if you're trying to do it yourself. And this is where we get tripped up because we get to, we get to throw it off, coming back, throw it off, coming back, get tripped up again, get way down again. And it's this, it's this cycle that, that we're on. And, and I, want, I would submit to you today that what is needed is not more information, another sermon, another church is not what you need is an encounter with God. That, that enables you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to throw off the weight that is weighing you down. To just get rid of the sin that's entangling and trapping you up. You were never meant to, you were never meant to do that alone anyway. It was always meant to be uh, in the power of God. Right in the middle of Isaiah chapter uh, 30, verse 21. I love this verse. It says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, meaning... If you go this way or that way, right? If, you, if, you're, if things are going good or if things are going bad, if it's great or you're in a trial, doesn't matter whether you go to the right or to the left, um, your ears will hear a voice behind you. Like God wants to speak to you. Like God wants to, God does, he wants to reveal himself to you. And you're going to understand how God can do that today. Like every single one of you, you can, you can have an experience with God. 
you can, you can hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. To that, a lot of people would say, well, Pastor Jason, I just haven't had that moment. I haven't heard that kind of, that moment or that inspiration or anything on my heart or mind or anything where God would like, you know, meet me in that way. Okay, Isaiah is going to help us see today. He's going to help us see why maybe we have it and how we can uh, have this moment with God where he reveals himself to you. And I believe everyone who knows Christ, uh, let me just, most people who know Christ want to have a moment with him. We, we want to experience him. We do want to encounter him. We kind of crave that. But I think the frustrating part about it is we kind of don't know how. It's like, I want to. I'm, and I've, I've, I've met people along the spiritual journey. They're like, man, I want, I want it. I want, but I don't know, I don't know how. And, and it could be, it could be after today or throughout, or throughout this message, it could be it's because you're doing it the wrong way. Like you're trying to, you're trying to like have this encounter that just, that isn't, that isn't the way that God even meets people or encounters people. So we're going to learn from one of, the, one of the greatest encounters of the Bible was, was how God encountered Isaiah. It's really, it's depicted in, in, in Isaiah. We're going to go through it today. We're going to learn from this encounter and how God, how God can encounter us. And if you do some studies on how God meets people, and when he does, and when he encounters people, if you take those all the times where God encounters people, you see patterns start to develop. You see, you see the, way, the way God does it, reveals himself, and what, even what he does next in, the, in, in people's lives, it's, it's, it, there's a pattern, and it's shown in, in Isaiah. So I'd like to take this, one of the greatest encounters of the Bible, and show you the pattern of a God encounter. How many want a God encounter? Is anyone here, man, just hungry, man, to just know God more? Let me show you. Here's, here's what a God encounter looks like. Write some notes with me today, you guys. Let's just, I, I, want, I want to help you know God more intimately, man, and have encounters. Here's number one of a God encounter, what it looks like. Our greatest pain can be a catalyst for our greatest gain. That's what we learned from Isaiah's story, that our greatest pain can be a catalyst for our greatest gain. You see, long before any bodybuilder said, no pain, no gain, right? God, God was already working through this, man. He was working through this long, long before that. The, the problem is, a lot of people, they want spiritual muscle. They want spiritual gains. They just don't want to work out for it. How many of you know some, you know, how many of you like that physically, right? You, you just, I mean, you want the muscles, you just don't want to be sore, right? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way, man. That pain can produce the greatest catalyst for, for God's revelation and encounter and, and gain in your life. And this is so important for you to understand this. You know why? Because it's not the natural response to run to God in the middle of pain. Our natural, for, it's, it's, it's our, our nature, the fallen part of us, the fallen nature runs away from God in the middle of pain. And see, so, so listen, that pain, that experience that you're going through, it can actually produce something. God reserves sometimes the moments of our greatest hurt and pain to show us our greatest revelations. It's, there's something about the sensitivity of that moment that if we pursue God, if we go to him in that pain, it can, it can be a catalyst for growth, for development, and for revelation. If you, just, if you turn to him instead of turning away from him, listen, even if the pain is your own mistake, See, this is where it gets us, man. The pain is sometimes our mistake, and we go, no, I can't go to God. I messed up, and I got to, okay, let me just, let me get it right. Let me, let me fix the situation, and then I'll go, no. That's why you're not having an encounter right there. It's because you're trying to control it. You were never meant to fix it yourself. God wants you to bring that pain and allow it to be a catalyst in your life for great revelation. Come on, church, amen? amen. Our greatest pain. I don't know what you're going through today. The next pain you're going through, or better yet, some of you are in pain today. And you need to stop running from God with that. And you need to start running towards him with that pain and let it produce something inside of you. Let's look at Isaiah's encounter. Um, it's, it's depicted in Isaiah chapter 6, starting in the beginning. It says, in the year King Uzziah died, in the year he died, and to, to put that into context, this is a low moment for Isaiah. Okay, that's what he's saying right here. He's saying, our king is dead. <laughs> This was, this was a relationship. I was the prophet. He was the king. And he was the greatest king Israel had ever had up to this point. You know, for, it was, it, he was, and, and then he, he started out so great, Uzziah, and he ended horribly. He ended so horribly. And Isaiah said, this was, it was in the year that King Uzziah died. It was a, my lowest moment. It was the darkest time. I mean, it was, there, the, the nation was, was 
crumbled now. There was darkness and chaos and disarray. And listen, it was in that lowest moment, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. Are you hearing me today, church? In my darkest moment, I saw the Lord. At my lowest point, I saw the Lord. Hey, stop running from God in the middle of your dark season, in the middle of your, of your pain, in the middle of your, your lowest point, and allow it to drive you to God. He said, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and a train of his robe filled the temple. God just gives him this amazing revelation. It's just a big, just this picture of God. He fixed his picture of God. Above him were seraphim, those are angels, huge angels, and they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. So God just gives this picture. Just a, and, and by the way, sometimes we read, this, read the Bible, and we think like, wow, that's great. That could never happen to me. I want you to know. Like this is, this is the, the vision that God gave the prophet, the seer, Isaiah, okay? And he never gave anyone another picture like it. The revelations God gives are unique. They are, they, are, they are for you. They are designed for you, for your journey, for your calling, for your destiny, for your family, for your career. If you would but turn to him and go to him, I'm telling you, God will give you insight and revelation. Don't be afraid like, oh, I never seen no seraphim. You ain't supposed to see seraphim probably, okay? You're not a seer, but God does want to reveal himself to you. Turn to him in the middle of your pain. I'm telling you, it could be a catalyst for your life. And then here's what happens next. This is why so many people miss encounters with God right here. You need to know that what God's going to do next after he reveals. Okay, number two, when you see God clearly, he's going to show you yourself. When you see God clearly, write it down this way, we see ourselves clearly. So many people miss out on the encounter because they don't allow God to go deep enough in their soul. See, God wants to do a deep work on the inside of you, in the deepest part of your soul. And this is where so many people push back. They experience presence. They experience something. And it's, it's, it's tangible. You know it. And you push back. Some of you even did it during worship. And, and, and God was moving. And, 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 and his light started to shine on some areas of your life. Or, or maybe you were afraid of that light shining. So you, and, and, so you started to just kind of push back against the presence, and so many people miss the encounter. Listen, you cannot have an encounter with God if you don't allow God to show you who you really are. You can't. You, God, this is what God wants to do in the encounter before he does anything for you, before he does anything through you. God wants to do something in you. He wants to do something inside of you. Look at Isaiah chapter 6, 5, right after he gets this picture, right after this revelation, this great this great catalyst in his life that he sees God, he runs to him and he goes to him in this season and he sees him. Next, the very next thing, he says, I'm in trouble, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. I, he sees himself now. He gets, he gets kind of, he sees his own condition. Woe to me. I'm ruined. I'm in trouble. I, I, I see God and it's making me see my own condition. And what's his condition? I'm a man of unclean lips. I, Isaiah had a cussing problem, I think, is what some, a lot of theologians believe he was a cursor, he, had some, he lost his temper, like he, he just had a, a foul mouth, this guy, and he says, and, and I love this, he, let, he, he shifts the blame a little bit, I mean, not, I don't only cuss, but they cuss too, I live among a people, they all cuss, I mean, we all cuss, God, and, and, and my eyes have seen, though, the King, the Lord God Almighty, he sees his own condition. You guys, I just want to help you posture yourself, position yourself to have encounters with God. And you just need to know that he's going there. God is going there. He wants to, sh he wants to shine his light in areas of your life, the deepest part of you. And I think so many times, church, I think so many times, we stop at an emotional experience. And instead, it could be a transformational encounter. You hear me? Okay. So it was, it was never, God never intended for you to have these moments with him where you come away and you're like, oh, wow, that was so great. Oh, worship song. And oh, my God, did you, oh, that was, oh, it was so lit. It was so lit. It was awesome. <laughs> you know, and this stuff. And it's like, what did God say? Oh, what did God reveal to you? Uh, 
Well, you didn't have an encounter then. You had an emotional high. And there ain't nothing wrong with enjoying God's presence. I enjoy it. I can, there ain't nothing wrong with it. sitting and enjoying and celebrating in God's presence. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But encounters, encounters have a pattern. God reveals himself in power. When he does, he'll give you a revelation of not only who he is, but of who you are. Of who you are. He'll want to shine some areas in your life. He just, he just shine the light on, on some areas he wants to. And, and, and so which gets to the next step, you guys, why he even does that, shines the, the light in areas of our, of our life because God wants to remove our past so he can redeem our future. God wants to remove our past so he can redeem our future. You see, in the, in the presence of God, when we see him clearly and we begin to see our, ourselves clearly and, and, and when you don't push back against it and you just allow him to take you there and you say, woe is me, woe, I see it, God. I see that. And I, I love this part of me out being a pastor because I, I get to hear these stories a lot where people not even knowing or intending like to, they, they didn't even know there was an area of their life that, that needed work, but just somewhere in the presence of God and the worship or in the message, God reveals to them something and and, and they just, we've had people like change relationships and change and stop this. And, stop. and not because, not because I'm up here going, you guys need to shine. And I'm, and I'm like pointing stuff out. Or even that God is, is, is trying to be like, look at that, you bad person, you. No, God shines his light in that area of our life so that we can deal with it. So he can remove it. That's why. He wants to remove your past and redeem your future. You see, there's our race back at the theme verse, the race that we're running. Some of us are running the race, and we don't know why it's so hard. Why it's so difficult. Why does it feel like I'm carrying burdens, and I keep getting tripped up and stuff? God is going, look, you're not supposed to deal with that yourself. Just draw closer. Come on, come on. Get closer, get closer. Let my, get in my proximity. Let my light shine on that area, and it will reveal the weight that's holding you down, the sin that's entangling you. I don't even, I'm not condemning you. I'm shining the light on it so you can run with perseverance. The race marked out for you, and throw it off. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching so much better than you're responding in this series. Some of us, we, we, we have a hard time with this because um, we, we can't see the right future. That, let me say this. We can't see God's future for our life. And maybe it's because we haven't dealt with the yesterdays. We haven't allowed God to finally deal with him like once and for all the yesterdays. Or maybe it's because we just have the wrong picture of God. And like Isaiah, God has to give him a bigger picture. And some of you need a bigger picture. Some of you are raised in a church maybe, and the picture of God that, that you were given is not the right picture of God, and it's hindering you from experiencing him today because it's the wrong picture. It's the wrong vision. Some of you have never been told that, you, that, that the God that we serve loves you unconditionally and immeasurably, that, that, that he wants to, that he has a plan for your life to make a difference, to be a world changer. And some of you, some of you have never, never heard that, and you need to know that. That that's the God that you serve. God, God, we don't serve a negative God. He doesn't like, God doesn't want to talk about your past. He wants to redeem your past. Amen. Tweet that, somebody. Come on. Isaiah 6, <laughs> chapter 6, verse 6. It says, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he'd taken with tongs, look at this, from the altar. Now, the altar is the place of shedding of blood. It's a place of, of covering of sins. It's, it's for us, it's the cross. It's the cross of Calvary. So for us, he took, he took the cross, and, he, and, and he, look what he did with it. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. I want you to see this from one moment to the next. One moment, I'm... I'm Woe to me, I'm so dirty and unclean and live among the people. And in the next moment, it's your guilt is taken away. Your sin atoned for. From what do you mean, God? Just, just a few moments ago, I was dirty. I was a sinner. I was, I was messed up. I had made the bad choices. All right, how, what, what's, what's the difference? I'll tell you what the difference is, the cross of Jesus Christ. See, those areas, think about that, those areas of your life that you feel helpless to change, those attitudes, those habits, those addictions, those, those things that you've tried to change, and it keeps entangling, and it keeps trapping you up. I'm telling you, all you need is to draw closer to God and let God, that, let the cross of Jesus Christ touch that area of your life. 
and bring lasting change to that area in Jesus' name. And I love, I love this about God, that he has the power to redeem our past, or to, to, to forgive our past, remove our past, and redeem our future. And some of you need to, need, to, need to see your future not in the lens of your yesterdays anymore, and you're still, that's what's holding you back. You, you need to let God remove it and start seeing a future with, with, in the, with God in the picture without the lens of your yesterday. And I love this. God not only comes and cleanses and removes your past, but, but Hebrews chapter 8 says he cleanses our conscience. That he, he takes away the shame and the guilt that we even feel about it. That he changes the way we feel about ourselves. That we see ourselves. Not only do we see God differently, high and lifted up, but we see ourselves differently. He says, then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Remember moment to moment. What do you mean? Just a moment ago, I, I was unclean. God says, no, I see a candidate. Just a moment ago, I was unclean. God says, I see a champion. Just a moment ago, I was unclean. God sees someone he can use for his kingdom and his glory. Who will go for us? And he said, well, if that's your picture, God, here I am. Okay, God. Isaiah, Isaiah must have got a revelation from one moment to the next, I'm telling you. He, must, he changed not only who, who he saw God, but how he, see him, how he saw himself. From, from woe to me, I'm unclean, I'm unworthy, I've done bad, I'm messed up, to just being touched by the altar of Jesus Christ. You know, Isaiah had a revelation of Jesus. He's, one of, he's where we get the greatest revelations of Jesus Christ, the prophetic... A lot of the prophecies we read on Christmas, those come from Isaiah. Isaiah saw the sea. He saw Jesus. Isaiah in this moment saw something, I believe. He saw a vision of God and a vision of himself that changed from woe is me to here I am, Lord, send me. And I want you to have that kind of encounter. And I think we do. I think we want to have that encounter. And if you do, then what I'm saying is that pain in your life, stop running from God. Run to him. Allow it to be a catalyst in your life. And when you get there, you need to know that God wants to, wants to work in the deepest parts of your life. And don't push back when he, when he shines that light, when he wants to reveal you to you. Don't push back. He wants, he, he's doing it for a purpose. There's a, there's a reason why God is show, showing that to you. And it's not to shame you. It's to redeem you. So before Isaiah leaves us, the last legend. I think he'd, he'd want us to have our own encounters. Yeah, we can learn patterns. We can learn about the encounter of Isaiah and how we can have an encounter ourselves. But I think Isaiah would want to encourage us to have some encounters of our own, that, that, that this is the way God wanted to move through his people, as the way he always intended to move through his people. So write down these few things that I believe in some keys for us to have an encounter that Isaiah is leaving us with, the final legend today. Number one, I believe he'd say God wants to reveal more of himself to you. Come on, somebody say more. more. Come on. I, I'm telling you, church, there is more of God. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. There is more of God. Hey, hey, church, there's more. Hey, hey, staff. Hey, leaders. Hey, pastors. Hey, dream team. Hey, small group leaders. Hey, leader, there is more. Hey, Pastor Jason, there is more of God. There, uh, we do not have everything. We do not know everything. It, there, there is more of God that he wants to reveal. And, and man, if you get bored with church, some people get bored like with, with church and, and, and they even stop coming to church because they've been there, done that kind of attitude. You, some people get to the place where they, oh, the, I, I know what the pastor's even going to say on oh, now. He, he starts to say that John chapter 15, oh, vine in the branches. Okay, yeah, I've heard there, been there, done that. I have the t-shirt, that kind of that attitude. Okay, listen, the reason why you get bored in church has nothing to do with the preacher. Church or the word of God. It has everything to do with your heart right here, that you forgot that there's more. There is more in that word. There is more in this day. There is more in this season. There is more revelation and power. There is more. And he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to reveal more of himself to you. Isaiah 55 and 6. This is what we need to do. Don't get to that place of boredom. Come on, church. Let's seek the Lord, everybody. 
Seek the Lord. Hey, hey, leaders. Hey, Discovery Church. Hey, members. Hey, family. Hey, church. Hey, everybody. Let's just seek the Lord. Let's pursue him. Let's go after him with all of our heart in every season. Let's just pursue God with everything we have. Actually, Jeremiah 29, 13 tells us that's the only way you're going to see God. A lot of us love, put up Jeremiah 29, 13 for me. We love Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11, you, we all, oh, for I know the, God, the plans God has for you, right? Not to harm you, but plans to give you hope and a future. We love that verse. We quote that verse. We claim that verse. But just two verses later, Jeremiah tells us how you can actually grab hold of that verse. You can grab hold of it. This is, this is actually, he says, okay, you want that? You want the hope and future? Man, I got a great plan for you. But you'll seek me and find me only when you seek me with what? With all your heart. See, this is the secret to an encounter with God. Starts right here. Learned the secret a long time ago. Write it down. Go all in. Man, I'm, I'm just, I'm so, I'm, I am just so passionate about this. I am determined to make disciples of Jesus Christ who are sold out for the kingdom, who just go all in, just go all in. See, a bunch of you are still trying to control your own spiritual journey still. You're still trying to be the, master, the captain of your own ship. And God is pulling. God is tugging on your reins. And some of you are scared. You feel it and you're scared. You know why? Because you don't know what that looks like. You don't know what going all in looks like. Some of you have a flawed concept of what going all in looks like. If we were to get down to it and peel away the layers and ask you some questions, some of you think really going all in is like becoming a missionary in a mud hut in Africa or... Or like full-time vocational ministry, I got to be on a stage or preaching or teaching or working for a church or something like that. Like that's going all in. And honestly, that's one of the tragedies of modern day church in Christianity is that we've, we've just kind of painted this picture of, of elite type of ministry. You need to know, listen, ministry is not what you do. Ministry is who you are. You are a minister of, of God. Do you know that? Look, so... You go all in wherever you are. Hey, you're in the classroom, go all in in that classroom. You're, you're a mechanic, go all in as a mechanic. You work outdoors, go all in outdoors. You're in construction, go all in as a construction worker. You work in, in an office, go all in in that office. You work in a warehouse, go all in for God in that warehouse. Just go all in wherever you're at. That's your mission field. That's what going all in means. It doesn't... It doesn't look like maybe how you think it looks like, and I'm telling you, God wants you. If you want to have encounters with God, you need to go all in. And you don't need to beat people over the head with the Bible to go all in either, okay? Let your life speak the gospel. Let your love speak the gospel. Let your kindness speak the gospel. Just go all in. Stop holding back. Go all in with God in your worship, in your devotion. I remember going to a church kind of like Discovery where there was passionate and it was energetic for the first time, and kind of freaked me out a little bit too. So I feel for some of you that aren't used to this, because uh, honestly, we, we, we kind of are non-denominational in that, in that regard. Uh, we, don't, we have a, a lot of denominations. We got tons of denominations. And so I know this is new to some of you. It ain't for some, but for some of you, it is. And, and, and I, I get it, man. I was, I was a heathen, never been to church, and went into a Pentecostal, spirit-filled church and freaked me out, man. <laughs> And so the only thing I could do was this number right here. That's, you know, and some of you got that. Some of you are at this stage of, of going all in. Your foot got the victory, but not the rest of your body. That's it. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, so you would thank me. I'm telling you, you, you would thank me if, if in, in, during worship you just said, forget it, man. I'm just, all right, God. You just kind of let your whole body express worship to God. And don't take my word for it. Don't just because, oh, because it's that kind of church. No. Take God's word for it. God's word says, clap your hands, all you people. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him with the instruments. Praise him with the loud voices. Praise him with the jump, with the shout. Don't, don't take my word for it. Just take God's word for it. I'm telling you, you want to encounter. And this is why some of us aren't encountering God. It's because you're still holding back. Because we're still, we're still holding back. We get to this place where it's in our head. We get this deep. But God... And we, and we like to know God in an in, in, in intellectual level and know more about him. But God wants to move about 18 inches further and, get, and we start to work on the deepest part of your heart and in your life. So he could do the second thing, right, which was, which was the shine the light in areas. Write it down this way. I believe Isaiah would say, God wants to change you. He wants to change you. 
And that includes me, man. God doesn't, now look, God doesn't change who you are. God changes how you are, okay? Because God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way, okay? He does. He's a good God that way. And that's why, that's why I need to stay pliable. I need to stay flexible. I need to come to church postured for God. What do you need, what do you need to do in me, God? What, what else do you have for me, God? What do, you, what do you need to work inside of me? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 says, come now, let's reason together. Come on, church. Let's get together with God. Come now. Come on. Let's, let's reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, here's the deal, they shall be as white as snow. You see, you still got some stuff on the inside of you. God says, I want to change you. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are, look at this, willing and obedient. Hey, church, that's your only role in this transformation. Willing and obedient. See, you can't change your life, but God can. God can change your life for the good. Some of you think, no, I've been like this my whole life, man. I've inherited habits and addictions and attitudes and behaviors, and, and it's just the way it is. No, it doesn't have to stay that way. No, come on, church, look at me. Everyone, look up here. Come on now, let's reason together. Come on, church, let's reason together. Let's get with God. Let's get with God, and let's trade in our, our crimson sins for white as snow. Let's trade in the weight that is weighing us down, the sin that's tangling us up, and let's throw it off in the presence of God. Come on, church. Let's, let's come now. Let's reason together. I love 1 Peter chapter 2. It says, like newborn babies, you got to crave this. Come on, church, man. I'm just hungry for God. Crave change. Crave that pure spiritual milk so that we, you will grow up into a full experience of salvation. You see, there's, salvation isn't the end. There's a full experience of salvation of which none of us have yet. We don't have the full experience of our salvation. He says, cry out for this nourishment now that you have tasted of the Lord's kindness. And some of you parents, how do babies grow? Really slow, doesn't it? Oh, gosh darn it. I mean, when I first had my first girl, um, <laughs> I was like, I thought she was broken or mentally ill or challenged or something like she's four months old there's something wrong with her why is she feeding herself already she's gonna change her own diet when is this supposed to happen honey and i thought something was wrong with this girl how long am i gonna have to feed this baby dang it what am i getting myself into but it's little by little it's what about bob right you see what about bob baby steps baby steps baby steps is that too old for some of you come on baby steps that's how people grow baby steps it's little by little, and I'm telling you, this is the, such a fun part about being a pastor is to see all on the ends of the spectrum of where people are at and to be able to lead and pastor and uh, equip and guide you through life and through the seasons of life, all on the ends of, of, of the spectrum. Here's the key, though. The key to this one about God wanting to change you, it's, it's a lot easier than you think. Here it is. Here's the key. Just take the next step. That's it. Hey, that's it. That, just the, just that, that baby step. I mean, that baby changed before your eyes after a while. We dedicated some of them. You can ask any of those parents. It was just yesterday that they were in the womb, right? That's what it feels like. It's just take the next step. That's all it is. Some of us have, I mean, we think like, oh, it's going to be this sudden like change. Granted, when you, when you come to Christ, there are things that immediately will fall off you. You get delivered. You get redeemed from. But there are still some things in your life that is a walk out process. It is a step by step, little by little. So listen, here's, here's the application of the key. If you don't have a relationship with God today, then take the next step. Just accept Jesus. Like, like Isaiah say, here I am. Okay. Is that how you see me, God? Okay. Here I am. Here I am. So some of you, uh, you you've been here for a while, but you, you're not part of the family. Come on, just take the next step. Come to step one. Here I am. Okay. All right, here I am. Some of you haven't got connected to a team yet in serving God, and you need to just take the next step and serve on a team somewhere. Here I am, God. Use me. Some of you know God, but you haven't been baptized as an adult after receiving him for your salvation, and you just need to get baptized. Take that next step and say, here I am, God. Use me. Take the next step. Just take the next step and keep growing in your understanding and relationship with God. And then here's the last one. I think he'd say, after all that, this is the whole reason. This is the whole reason of the encounter, guys. Here it is. Because God has an assignment for you. 
I mean, that's why. That's why God wants to reveal himself to you. That's why he wants you in proximity in your pain. Hey, don't leave during your pain. Get in proximity in your pain so I can shine your light on this situation. And when I shine the light, I, I want to I get rid of that stuff in your past so that you can see a new future with me involved in it, man. I, I got an assignment for you to do. Hey, everybody, God's got an assignment for you on this earth. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose. And I'm telling you, this truth right here motivates me so much to pursue God, to read his word, to pray, to worship him, to go after him with all my heart. You know why? Because I need a fresh vision for my life. I need a fresh uh, vision for my family, for my marriage, for my kids, for my staff, for our church. I need, I need the next assignment. There's a new, there's a new, I need fresh vision. God, it, it just, it motivates me so much to go hard after God. You know, why God wants to have an encounter with you, why God wants to change you, why God wants to take you through all that process. You know why? I hope you, listen, because God has a plan for your life because he has an assignment for you. Isaiah 60 says this, arise. Come on, church. It's time to stand up. It's time to rise up and shine, he says, because the world needs it. The world, the world needs people full of God's power, his joy, his peace, his love, his kindness, who are going through the same junk and stuff everybody else is going through, but, but they're going through it differently with hope, with peace, with joy. God, he needs his people to shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and he needs his people to shine. And thick darkness is over the people's. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. And look what happens. Look what happens next. Nations. Oh, my goodness. Nations, peoples, your friends, your family, your neighbors, the world is going to go. What in the world is going on with those people? And they are going to be drawn to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. It's what you were created for. You were created for that. Last verse, you know why God changed you. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, because we are God's masterpiece. I don't know if you ever heard that, but can I, can you receive this from God today, young man, young, young woman? You're a masterpiece of God. You're a masterpiece of God. You're a masterpiece of God. He created us anew in Christ Jesus. This is why, this is the, the so that, the, of the encounter so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago and that's why maybe you have already been baptized maybe you haven't but that's why the key here is discover my purpose discover my purpose that's why there the encounter is there because god wants to give you an assignment a destiny he has a purpose for you put your things in your lap and let's pray, you guys. Let's have a moment with God. Let's just set it down right there. Close our eyes. Let's bow our heads all across this worship center and just have some time with God right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing yourself right now because you've heard it from the, the prophet Isaiah. You've heard it from the word of God. And I hope you've been encouraged today. And I hope the path is clearer. What maybe didn't make sense in your life is kind of clearer today that you see differently today and i pray right now come on church in the name of jesus for every person who's going through pain right now i pray for that person who's right now in so much pain they're running from god you're running from god but you just happen to actually find yourself at church today somehow and it's no accident thank you god for getting them here today to hear your word that even in the middle of their mistakes no matter what it is god you're still reaching out for them god is drawing you don't run from god run to God. Let him do a work inside of you and then let him remove your past so he can give you a future that includes him. That is your destiny. So I speak it over you in the mighty name of Jesus. With every head bowed and eye closed, there are some of you here today that the light of God is shining on your life. And it's revealed some areas that, that maybe you're not too happy about. Maybe for some of you for the very first time, God is revealing himself to you. He's showing a picture of himself to you, how much he loves you, that he's your savior and redeemer. 
but he wants to remove your past, those hurts, those pains, those sins, and he wants to give you a new future. The Bible says if you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. That's it. You don't change yourself. You don't fix yourself. You just run to God in the middle of this. And he will, I'm telling you, he will remove it and give you a new future today. And if that's you with every head bowed, and I want to, some of you need to do that, make that decision today. Maybe it's a, you need to make it for the second or third time or you're coming back to God today. Some of you need to make that decision today and surrender to God. And let him, give you, let him remove your past and redeem your future again. With every head bowed and I close, I'm not going to have you come up to the front or single you out. I want to just pray for you right where you're seated. I want to help you with some words to make this day, that moment where you accepted, where you stopped running from God and you ran to him today. If that's you and you want to receive God, you're ready to surrender, you're ready for a new future, come on, without, without any shame, lift up your hand, lift it high right now, lift it up, say, Pastor, that's me, I need it, I'm running to him today, yes, all over, come on, join us all over this place, come on, come on, yes, 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 come on, yes, praise you, Jesus, all over this place, yeah, praise you, God, yeah, come on, thank you, God, thank you, God. Go ahead and put your hands down for a moment. Will you pray like this? Just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm, I'm tired of running from you today. I'm running to you. Today I declare, Jesus, you're my Lord. I, I surrender my life to you, and I give you the control. Here it is. Take over. Come live inside of me and make me brand new. God, right now I thank you for removing my past. According to your word, the stains of crimson red are white as snow. Thank you, God, for giving me the right picture of who you are and the right picture of who I am. God, and I speak over every person right now, God, that we would go all in in our relationship with you. Hold nothing back. God, letting your light shine every time in your presence, walking with you, not being afraid or pushing back, but allowing you to touch the deepest part of our soul. Thank you, God, for revealing yourself to us. And there are some next steps I know right here in this house. There are some next steps of baptisms, next steps of new relationships and community and small group leaders and small group involvement. There's some next steps of ministries birth. Uh, there's next steps of ministry involvement. Some of you need to join a dream team. Some of you need to get connected to a, a family, a church family, and, and you're afraid because you've been hurt, and God wants to remove that hurt to redeem this, the picture of his church in your eyes, and you need to take a step of community again. I don't know who that is. Come on. There's a next step in the house. There's some next steps. God wants to reveal it to you. There's always a next step, and there's always an assignment. So I pray, God, in your presence that you would reveal destiny. You would reveal, reveal your purpose. You would reveal assignment. God, we're just not satisfied with emotional stirrings anymore. We're not satisfied with emotional highs anymore. We want to be transformed by your presence. We want transformational encounters, God. So have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. If you receive that, give God a big old praise, church. Come on. Amen. Amen.